In this video, I'd like to um, go over the sort of proof of the long division algorithm. This is not, it's not going to be a general proof, but it's, we're going to be using an example to show um, kind of how the general proof goes. I think it's sufficient. So example we're going to use here is this, the dividend 2x time, 2 times x cubed minus x plus 2 and divisor 3x squared plus x minus 1. So here's a summary of um, what happened if you apply the division, a long division algorithm. The dividend is written usually here. And because it's missing x squared term, we have to insert the 0 times x squared like this. And divisor is written here. And after we write this dividend and divisors in this place, we go through the long division algorithm and, and it terminates whenever we have this intermediate um, dividend whose degree is less than the degree of the divisor here. And in that, at that stage, what you have over here in this space is called a quotient of this algorithm, and this is called the remainder of this algorithm. We will go over this division algorithm, but what we do after we perform this algorithm is that we look at these four things and put it together into uh, some algebraic statement. So I wrote down here that algebraic statement. The dividend part goes here to the left hand side, and what we do with the rest of the part is that you multiply the divisor to the quotient like this, and outside we write this remainder as an additive term. Then this left-hand side dividend it turns out to be identically equal to this product plus the remainder term. So we do this division algorithm, long division, to obtain this important statement. It turns out this is a very, very useful way of uh, writing polynomial in a different way. So we're doing this to obtain this algebraic statement and this video is about com making a comparison of what we do in this algorithm and comparing with this assertion, this uh, validity of the statement. So let's go over the, the method here. First we look at the first term, which is 2x cubed. And we look at this leading term, 3x squared. We always play with this leading term. So here I underlined it so that if you multiply this leading term to whatever we put it here, it matches the leading term of its dividend. So if you multiply this one to that, we get 2x cubed. So it's easy to think about the power of x, which is squared, so I have to multiply x to get x to the third. Next thing you have to think about is what is the coefficient? You have to multiply to 3, so then you get 2. Usually they are set up uh, easily so that you can see that number quickly, but I chose that so that you have to think about it, chose this example, so that you have to think about how the coefficient works. So here's the way to see it. We don't know what this coefficient is. 3 times 1 coefficient gives you 2. So that's what you have to figure out. From there you can easily see the c is 2 over 3. So that's why you have to multiply 2 over 3 here. Then easily you can check if you multiply these two, 3 and 3 cancels. It becomes 2 over just 2, so that matches the coefficients. Now you got this term correctly, and as you multiply, you match this exactly to x cubed. Then what goes here is that you have to multiply that one term to the rest of the polynomial. So you multiply that to x, multiply that to the constant 1. So I think that part's easy. It's just to bump up the coefficient, um, the power of the monomial part there. What you have to focus on is that we chose this number and uh, with this term, and we multiply to the entire polynomial, entire the divisor, not just to that. And it's written here. Next thing we do is we subtract this bottom line from the dividend. So that's what I'm doing here. This is matched, therefore it's always supposed to be zero. And next term, you have to line up with x squared, not doing this one. That's why we inserted this zero times x squared there. Since we're subtracting this from this part, you get the negative 2 over 3 x squared. Let's do this part careful, carefully, which is what I'm doing here. The negative 1 is that coefficient. When you subtract this, 
you have to subtract whatever this uh, coefficient down there is, which is positive 2 over 3. So this all together, and so you write it, becomes negative 5 over 3. That's why we have this number. Now, at this stage, you look at this uh, number underneath this. This is kind of our new dividend. And if this degree is less than the degree of the divisor, when you stop, if not, in this case, the degree is the same. And we have to do one more step. So let's think about what to multiply. Since the degree is the same, it has to be just a constant. So 3 times what gives you negative 2 over 3? That's the question we have to ask, and that what goes here. So this is a question. It's different. See, 3 times what number gives you negative 2 over 3? So you have to figure that out. So from here, C is uh, negative 2 divided by 9. So that's why we have negative 2 divided by 9. If you actually multiply these to the leading term, 3x squared, then you do get this number here. 3 and 9 cancels, you get negative 2 over 3. That's this part there. Now, like we did last time, not only we multiplied the first term, we have to multiply the, um, all the other terms in the divisors. So this will pick up negative 2 over 9x, negative 2 over 9. So that's that here. So let's do the subtraction carefully. So this negative 5 over 3 subtracted um, negative the difference with a negative 2 over 9. So we're subtracting negative 2 over 9 from this negative 5 over 3. So negative negative makes a positive. So altogether becomes 8 over 9. I will leave this um, arithmetic to you. But let's do this part here. Here's a 2 and subtraction and this negative 2 over 9. So this becomes positive 2 over 9 again. So altogether, this becomes a 20 over 9 because this is um, 18 divided by 9. So we have this second new dividend, or just the third dividend we're dealing with, and this degree is less than the degree of the divisor, and this is where we stop the algorithm. Let me remind you when we went through this algorithm to come up with this algebraic statement. So I hope you um, we had a nice review on how the algorithm goes. So from that algorithm, uh, we're going to pull out the statement. And that's going to be the proof. So here we go. I copy that entire summary of that uh, long division algorithm. And I'm going to start with this obvious statement, the div um, dividend. 2x cubed minus x plus 2 is written in that form, just like we uh, inserted here. Then what we're going to do is an add and subtract the same quantity from both sides, so this equation, this obvious equation, remain valid. And those, what to subtract and what to add is coming from here, and at the end you will obtain the statement we wanted. Let's recall the first thing we did, which was multiplying. Actually, we figured that, that out. So that part doesn't have the part of the proof. We just um, you know, observe what happened as we go through multiplication and subtraction part. If you multiply that to this divisor, that's one thing we do, then we're going to get this one. Okay? So this 3 over 2 over 3 times x times this divisor is equal to 2x cubed plus 2 over 3 times x squared plus 2 over 3x. So that's what that is. Not just this one. We're just multiplying this one to the divisor. So that's what I'm doing. The divisor, I'm subtracting from both sides the following quantity, 3x squared plus x plus 1 times 2 over x. So I subtracted this quantity from left-hand side. So you have to subtract the same quantity from the right-hand side. But as you can see, that's not quite the same looking quantity. It's different looking. But what this was, was exactly the copy of this line, which was exactly the product of this one, that one expanded. So although they look different, this and that is identically um, equal expression. It's identically the same expression. So this remains valid. We're just using a slightly different form of the identically same expression. And if you keep it this way, at the end we have a nice statement. 
The next step, once you write that down here, is that we're subtracting this row from the top row, which is the original dividend, and we write it down here. So we subtracted this from the top. So that's what we're doing here. This is original dividend. We're subtracting this part, which is written here. That's a product of this monomial times the divisor. So we simplify that, and it's written here. If you do this arithmetic, it's supposed to be this statement right there. So it's summarized it here. So you don't expand it here. If you expand it, you will get exactly the same thing. You just keep the left-hand side in this form so that we can get a slightly different, identically same expression, but uh, while we're keeping um, simplifying on the right-hand side. So if you do that, arithmetic is supposed to be exactly this part right here, so that's copy down there. So that's kind of end of the first uh, step of this long division. All right, I moved things around a little bit, but that's the again the same thing we looked at it. So what is the next step? We just look at this one, and this time we multiply that number negative two over nine to this divisor, and it's written down here. That's kind of the summary, skipping that how we discover this number. The next step, what the next step shows here, you see this left hand side got a little longer, so this entire line is actually left hand side. We copied that and we had it over there. This time we're subtracting um, this quantity from left hand side. And right hand side was different looking, but it is the same as that. So we're subtracting different looking expression. But again, this, uh, this expression here is exactly this row and this row was obtained by multiplying this constant to this divisor and then write it out here. So in the left hand side is exactly that constant times the divisor and if you multiply it out you get exactly that. So this product is identically equal to what's in this parenthesis. So if you're subtracting the same quantity from both sides, although they're looking different, um, this equal symbol remains valid. So, like we did last time, we keep this left-hand side as it is and try to simplify right-hand side. This one was this row, the second dividend, and this was the result of the product. And we subtracted this bottom row from the top row, and simplification is written down here. So that you can clearly see it here. So if you do the arithmetic, the right-hand side is going to be this linear polynomial. It was taking a bit too much space. This left-hand side was just abbreviated left-hand side, and it focused on the simplifying the right-hand side, which is done down here. So I copied this one in here. So let me rewrite this entire left-hand side without simplifying just the way it is. And right-hand side is kept simplified into that shape. So right-hand side is now pretty simple. I want you to look at left-hand side and organize left-hand side a little bit such that we obtain that important identity that I showed earlier. So this is a dividend, and here's a common divisor. This is the divisor, and this is a divisor. This common divisor appeared as a common factor for these um, terms you were subtracted. So you can factor out this 3x squared plus 1 out of these terms and not touching the dividend. Then this is what happened. If once you factor this one out, together with this negative, because it's subtracting, there will be always this negative. So I uh, factor out the negative the divisor and negative the divisor. So that's negative divisor factored out. So if you look at this term, negative divisor is factored out. What's left is 2 over 3x. This whole negative divisor is factored out. So what's left here is negative 2 over 9. So here's a dividend. And here's a divisor, and this happened to be the collection of all those things in the quotient. And this is the remainder. So I will leave that, uh, isolate this dividend here, divisor and the remainder to the other side. So here's again the summary from uh, earlier stage is a dividend, divisor, and all the steps are now algebraically simplified. And we first multiply this and subtract it, and first, second we multiply that and subtract it. That's the summary of the process, and here in the all simplification, and after we do that. So if I move this entire term to the right-hand side by adding that term both sides, 
we obtain this statement and this like I said before there was a target is a dividend is written as a divisor times something called a quotient and plus the remainder this is eight so about that so here's a quick summary um, with everything shown here first this is the entire division algorithm shown here and this is the summary of the process first we multiplied 2 over x 2 over 3 times x to the divisor and subtracted it and then we multiply negative 2 over 9 multiply the divisor and subtracted it and all this process we simplified all that and boiled down to the right hand side simplification is this linear polynomial and left hand side is factored into this form keeping this divisor and dividend into a keeping those in the shape in the expressions then you can pull out this nice thing that was a phone interruption but I think I explained everything there that uh, although it's a simple example this principle uh, works the same and I hope you uh, believe that it's uh, the the algebraic statement with the quotient remainder uh, is valid for all the long long division algorithm thanks